Glasgow, Edinburgh and Aberdeen are major power centres of Scotland today. 1500 years ago, however, Dunad Fort in Argyll was the capital of Dalriada, an ancient Gaelic kingdom that comprised parts of modern Ireland and the western seaborn of Scotland. Today, I've driven two and a half hours from my home to Dunad Fort fueled by caffeine and a five-hour Jocko Andrew Huberman podcast. Dunad Fort is just under 30 miles from Inverary. And great news, Inverary have a good chippy. The Kingdom of Dalriada hit its golden age around the 6th and 7th centuries AD. And the people of Dalriada were often referred to in Latin as Scotty, and later as Gales. This is an artist impression of Dunad Fort in its heyday during the Golden Age of Dalriada. It's around 700 AD, and you can see it's bursting with life. Today, little remains of this fort, but the echoes of history are all around. This is Dunad's royal inauguration stone. Kings of Dalriada were inaugurated by placing one foot in the footprint, about an equivalent to a size 6 today. Through this ceremonial act, they were bethroning themselves to the land that fed their people. In Ireland, where six such royal footprints are known, records claim that the stone recognises and proclaims the rightful king. According to one theory, Dunad's Ogham script is the voice of the rock during the inauguration. While its meaning is disputed, current research suggests some parts translate as people or men of the bog. In legend, the hero Asayan leapt here from Rudal Hill, one kilometre away. His foot gouged out the footprint, his knee the basin, while his outstretched hands left finger marks, possibly the Ogham script. Dinad has served as a fort for over 2,000 years, and it makes use of the natural landscape. Bog-like environment surrounds this area. Now I can certainly attest to the fact that Dunad Fort served as a natural defensive fortress or made use of the natural landscape. As an interest in getting away from, from people at the top and finding somewhere a wee bit quieter to film, I came down one of the side banks of the fort and although it was possible, it's exceedingly difficult. Uh, I was carrying a tripod in hand, which is maybe equivalent to carrying an axe or a sword um, in historical times. But to do that, to, to either ascend or descend under attack would have been extremely difficult, uh, which is one of the reasons why uh, it served as such a natural fortress for the Dalriadans. Dunad had strong trading links with much of Europe, with so much pottery found here. One of the reasons is location. Ireland and the Hebridean Islands are just west and southwest of Dunad. Numerous archaeological finds have been discovered here including wine containers from Gaul, which was in ancient France and ancient Belgium. Dunad served as an international hub during its golden age. Diplomats, traders and royal refugees came here from across Western Europe. The discovery of precious metals and rare minerals, fine pottery and glassware, reveals how well connected Dunad was in the ancient world. Archaeologists have found traces of gold, silver, copper, lead and iron working and more than 900 mould fragments, many for making brooches. Contributing to the artistic style that reached its zenith with the Book of Kells. Thanks for watching so far. If you would like me to continue making videos, please support my work. You can support my work through Patreon where you gain exclusive benefits and the more people that sign up, the more benefits there will be. You can also support my work through donating through PayPal and buymeacoffee.com. All the links are in the description below. Thank you, and now on with the video. Just over my shoulder is the sea, and the gales of Dalriada had a strong naval presence. Curraks, a type of boat, were used by the gales of Dalriada. Some sources also suggest that the gales of Dalriada built their version of the Viking longboats. Dalriada and Dunad had a strong connection to Iona in the Hebridean Islands. Iona is around 37 miles to the west, and St Columba, the founder of the monastery on Iona, was granted the island of Iona at Dunad by King Comgail in 563 AD. As well as the royal inauguration footprint, there are several other marks on this rock. 
although some are very faint to the eye. The second feature of the rock is a boa, a Pictish emblem, possibly symbolising sovereignty. The third feature of this rock is an Ogham script, a Gaelic script used until the 11th century. And number four is considered a second footprint. The people on either side of the North Channel Seaway shared a common language and culture. The people of Dalriada spoke a Goidelic or Q Celtic language, although different languages seem to have been spoken across the diverse kingdom. There is little archaeological evidence for the Gael's legendary invasion of Argyll from Dalriada in Ireland in about 500 AD, raising the question as to whether it was an invasion at all. Dunad itself was rooted in the ancient Kilmartin Glen, where numerous objects and standing stones have been found going back thousands of years ago. As with many other Celtic traditions, there is also stories of fairies in Dunad. This carved stone ball was found at Dunad and is displayed in Kilmartin Museum. Similar enigmatic objects were made across Scotland, particularly in the northeast up to around 4,000 years ago. According to local legend, stone balls and other artefacts with magical powers were abandoned by fairies in a farmhouse below the hill fort. In the 8th century AD, the Picts laid siege to Dunad as an entry from 736 AD in the Annals of Ulster describes, the Picts sacked Dunad, the capital of the kingdom. Angus son of Fergus, king of the Picts, laid waste to the territory of Dalriada and seized Dunad, and burned Crec and bound and chains two sons of Selbach. In the 9th century AD, Dalriada and the Picts merged into one political union under Kenneth MacAlpin known as the Kingdom of Alapa. Dalriada itself was officially disestablished in 850 AD. The Kingdom of Alapa was the birth of the embryonic Kingdom of Scotland. Thanks for watching. If you would like to support this work through Patreon, buymeacoffee.com or make a donation through PayPal, please do so via the links in the description below. Please remember to subscribe and hit the bell and I'll speak to you soon.